the Black Bears, the New York Blackhawks, Rock Gold, and the Frozen Ropes groups from Texas, Pennsylvania, and Massachusetts. This series that we're gonna be doing with STAR is gonna delve into player development along the way, uh, but it's also about information, not just for the parents, not just for the coaches, but also for the players. And there's a couple of things over the past 25 years that have come about that can be disturbing, but they can be informational also. And I really believe it's about player development and getting the best for your players. These live events are about giving you that information and a tool uh, that will help you in choosing where the best place is for you to get your player development, where the best place is for your daughter maybe to go, and, and for you guys, for baseball, the best place for you to go. And I think one of the, the greatest lines I ever heard was, the grass ain't always greener on the other side of the fence. It's greenest on the side you water it the most. And it's up to you, the player, and it's up to you, the parents and the coaches, whether you're in baseball or softball, is to figure out where can I get the best instruction, legitimate instruction, without having to spend all the money in the world to maybe go to uh, this travel team two states away, three states away, four states away. Because if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. So I challenge you to find out the best places in your local area to get that player development. Don't get sold a bill of goods. Everybody out there is promising a scholarship. And if you're on my side of the business, there's only one entity that can give those scholarships and that's the college coaches, okay? And there's only one part of, of pro baseball that gets to take a look and that's the scouts that determine whether you're player developed or not. And so what we look for for player development is the simple aspects of being athletic okay when we start to see players that are bound up by extra mechanics that are bound up by worrying about where their feet are and what else is happening but without, without the natural movements that human bodies do then we know that we have more work cut out for us in deprogramming players than we do in, in respect of teaching the game and allowing the game to be taught so my challenge to you once again is to make sure that you're trying to find out where I can get my best development on skills. So let's, let's get into that a little bit in respect of the teachers that you're looking for. And I'm going to give you the, the question I always ask parents. If, if your young person is in elementary school and they're learning the times table. Do you, do you want them to get yelled at when they get the wrong answer? Do you want them to be admonished about you should know that from their teachers in school? Well, I feel the same way about athletics. We are teachers. Coaches, That's you can take that for whatever it's worth, but we are actually in a teaching profession. And we're trying to get the young players and pass the message on to the young players about not only developing their skill sets, but developing their game sense skills. Okay, and so if we can make a great positive environment for that to happen, I think we're, we're gonna get more out of that than the constant, and I don't wanna use this and make it sound bad, but the football mentality of go, 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 and smashing helmets and the whole thing, because that's not how our game is played. Our game is played in a serene sense of being able to do athletic moves and allowing that to happen, and the more positive environment that can happen, we're gonna be okay. Okay, so I'm looking for that in respect of uh, I'm looking for legitimate teachers. I don't think you'd want a, uh, a landscape architect trying to uh, teach you how to take an engine out of a, a 57 Chevy and put it back in. So the same goes for our sport is there are teachers out there that have played this game, the bat and ball game at a pretty high level and a high level to me is you know, once you get out of high school, you're starting to develop different skill sets in the acumen of the game. And so you're learning things. So I'd be looking for a teacher or a coach that has had some type of skill sets in respect of maybe it's not baseball, or maybe it's not softball, but maybe it was basketball because they understand the environment or they understand the mentality of what it takes to do that. Maybe, maybe it was football and maybe they have developed a great keen sense of teaching skills you know, instead of the smash mouth aspect of what's going on. And I think that if you talk to a lot of travel coaches right now that have been around the game for a long, long time, they have evolved. And the ones that have been around for a long time have evolved successfully because they found out that there needs to be more than, 
yelling and screaming. There needs to be an art of communication and trying to get players to do certain things. So, all right, so let's let's get into once again. You know, what what are the simple parts of us trying to get developed? And I don't want to spend tonight on like I'm going to show you how to play catch and throw. I'm not going to show you how to hit. We're going to get to those along this series that Star is putting out right now, that Frozen Ropes is putting together. I think it's a tremendous format that you, the audience right now that are part of this, have your own, you have your own, you have your own classroom with these type of things. And I'm really excited to be part of this type of stuff. So, so what are the skills that we're looking for, for you to be looking to get developed? And as mundane as it might sound, the ability to throw in our game is key. If you can't throw, then you can't play. Yeah, there's only one one position I believe that's called the designated hitter or the designated player, right? All the other ones have to be on the field and have the ability to throw. And so, what are you trying to do in your throwing skill sets? And hopefully, your coaches are not just say, "Okay, go out there and get loose." So we're looking for somebody that looks like they know what they're doing. You know, when they pick up a ball, how their grip is, those type of things. But we're looking for the athletic movements. Okay, do their skills, do they have to throw it on the money every single time? No, and what's on the money? Because if you're telling your kid to throw it into a box, you're not giving them the benefit of, of how hard this game is, all right? And then you're taking away the fact that the person receiving the ball has got to move to go catch that ball. So not only are we looking at people that throw and throw correctly in a, in a sequence that's kinetically sound and connected, but we're looking at the receiver too. How are they receiving? Are they jerking around? standing in line or are they getting behind the ball and making sure they're in a proper position with their footwork to receive the ball to give them the best chance to return the throw. So those are the type of things that we look for. And we look for that. You know, it's not just out of the players that we look for that, but I've gone and seen programs that go out to the field. And I'll, <laughs> I'll use this saying is I've walked away a few times when I see the warm up going on is, is this is you could always tell the winners and the losers at the starting gate. So if there's not a structured environment of getting loose in proper throwing mechanics and receiving mechanics, and it doesn't have to be a, a, like a marine type of everybody throws here, everybody gets down on the knee. No, we're talking about is there a focus going on? Are you taking your skill sets seriously and deliberately? Are you practicing every opportunity you can to get better, you know, between the ages of 12 and 18 years old? Okay, can you be socializing while you're doing it? Of course you can, but there still has to be a focus on that skill at that particular time. Footwork and receiving, I think that's part of it as we talk about that. Being athletic, making athletic moves, not mechanical moves, and that delves into the hitting parts of the game also. Is, is I, I will say this, that, that, that less is more when it comes to everything that we do with the highest level of fast pitch softball. Okay, and as you talk to major league people and major league coaches, less is more always comes up. You know, you, it's easy enough to understand when you're talking to a player and if you ask them, what, what is the answer of one plus one? Everybody's going to get that answer. But if you ask them, you know, what's 368 times 395, they're, they're not going to give you an answer because they don't know. So when you're clogging their brains with all this minutia information of, oh, this is what the front toe does and then the back heel at the same time, that's baloney. OK, the bottom line is for hitters is can you match up your timing with the pitcher? Can you be on time to the collision point? Can you get the barrel to the ball with an athletic move? OK, and our game is played from the elbows to the fingertips. So once again, we're looking at athletic moves. We're not looking at mechanical, you know, swing out of your shoes type stuff and launch angle baloney that goes on. We're saying, can you get the barrel to the ball? And the simpler, the easier for us. And. Look, when you're facing 92, 93, four mile an hour fastballs in high school, okay, and even mid 90s, low 90s in college, as a baseball player, you've got a little bit more time than a fast pitch softball player does to get the barrel to the ball. But at the same time, is your timing matching up with the pitcher? So these are the type of things that we're looking at. These are the type of skill sets that we want you to be looking for in your development programs with the coaches that you're looking at. Is I wouldn't be just going to a team that's trying to sell you a bill of goods that if you come to my team, I'm going to guarantee you a scholarship. As soon as I hear the word guarantee, I'm walking away. There's no guarantees at all. Okay, The only guarantee that I want from the players to see the effort on the ball field. So that's where we're at with that one. We talk about human. And, and we, we say this a lot to our players 
with the United States team and even in college and player development is, is can you make a human move? Can you run like a human? Okay, can you take a lead like a human? Can your body be in a posture like a human when you're throwing, catching, and hitting instead of all this type of stuff with you're getting, you know, hips and shoulders and all these joints that you're trying to get in line instead of just make a smooth move. And I guess one of the best analogies I've ever heard as a hitter was if, if you were a tennis player, if you were a right-handed tennis player, can you make a nice, smooth, backhanded tennis swing to make collision with the ball out in front? And that's actually what you should be doing in your kinematic sequence and hitting. So once again, that's a human move, not a mechanical move, okay? Timing matchups are important, as I've already mentioned. And then here's the one thing I want to make sure that, that you all do as, as, as players, parents, coaches, when you're looking for a program, is why don't you go and ask the coaches, what is your plan for my player? Where do you see my player on day one? Where do you see my player on, uh, at the end of month one? Where do you see him at the end of six months? Where do you see him at the end? What is your plan in the player development process, whether I'm an infielder, an outfielder, or a pitcher? Okay, what challenges are you going to give me? I wouldn't necessarily worry about what showcases you're going to go see. Because if the player is good enough, they're going to be found. Okay, and, and, and I go back to one of these things that we talk about amongst my peers in college is how many times have you heard a player coming off of a, a big name travel ball program, one that goes to Colorado every summer or they go to California, right? And, and they're a can't miss kid. And then they go to college and you don't hear about them anymore. So I don't, I don't quite understand what can't misses are because when you get to college, that's really where the player development begins to take advantage to the next level of softball. What we're hoping for at the 18 under and the 16 under and the 14 under is that the coaches continue a nice progressive athletic player development, give them the ability that when they get to college, which I want you to think about this for college, it's just like the minor leagues. Okay, when you get a kid graduated out of high school and they get drafted to go into pro baseball, between 18 and 22, they're in the minor leagues, they're in a player development program to try to get to the major leagues. Well, in women's softball, I want you to think about the analogy there too. Okay, you, college softball is not the highest level of softball there is. That's still part of the player development process. That's the minor leagues between 18 and 22. So we hear a lot about especially in the female game of fast pitch, that, oh, my kid's not getting a lot of playing time in her freshman year. Well, I want you to go to the baseball and ask the baseball guys how many of them are getting great amount of playing time in their initial part of their freshman year. Not a lot. It's still part of the process of player development. So we have to take a step back and understand the patience of player development. And so as you go through this, and I keep going back to the travel ball coaches, 18, 16, 14, and 12, we're hoping – and for the lack of a better terminology, and at my age right now, sometimes the things I say, I really don't care, but we're just hoping that they don't screw them up with giving them extra things instead of just a natural ability to play this game, okay? So I think that's probably the biggest point of advice I can give you is make sure that you ask for the plans of what's going on. And then the last thing is this. We can talk about mechanics all we want. We could talk about skill sets all we want. We could talk about recruiting all we want. I do know this. If your player goes out there on the ball field and they're showing enthusiasm and work ethic, stop concerning yourself for productivity in that showcase game or that camper clinic. Okay, I don't really care about statistics. Sometimes it's important for players to be seen when they don't do well because we want to see how they bounce back. Okay, so instead of you blowing them up with uh, letters A, they hit 14 home runs, This it doesn't matter, okay? It matters, can this young lady, can this young man show us athletic ability and then we can take it from there. So it's about player development and the skill sets, player development and the athletic ability and not so much about the promotion of their statistics in the local league or their statistics in the showcase because all that stuff doesn't matter. Okay, it's skewed in a different way, but there's nothing like athleticism. So I'll keep going back to that all the time. 
Okay. All right. Now there's a couple of questions, obviously, that'll be asked during this time. And this is, this is different for me because this is me talking to a camera, which I know I can talk a little bit, but you kind of like to get enthusiasm from the audience and, and that's okay because I'm, I'm feeling that, uh, it's, it's me giving you a, a little bit of my energy of how I hit the ball field every single day, not only as a player in the past, but uh, as a coach. I bring a lot of energy out there all the time, um, and I think that's also what you're looking for. Uh, and we feed off each other that way. And so this is kind of important. So a lot of the questions that I get from, from parents and students uh, about, you know, what does it take to get to that level of an Olympian? What does that take to get to that level of, of a professional ball player that's going to be successful in, in Major League Baseball? Well, you'd be surprised if I told you that they're one and the same. You know, it's amazing when you see all these players across the country, and then you have to whittle it down to, um, especially for the United States Olympic team, you only have 15 roster spots that are going to be eligible to play in the Olympics from all the players in the country from all the players that play not just college softball, okay, but high school ball and travel ball, okay, and professional ba uh, softball. All the players in the country, you got to whittle it down to 15 players. And the scouts in the big leagues are doing the same thing. They're trying to whittle it down to one or two or maybe three draft choices a year that they feel are going to be able to move through their system. So I've written down a few things here, and, and it's important that I write stuff down now. I, I, I try to do as much as I can off the cuff, but like some of your parents and some of your coaches' players, it's, it's, it's tough sometimes when your cup runneth over with all this information. So I wanted to make sure that I gave you these six things that I believe are real imperative in your player development process because it's, it's about being empathetic. It's about being... Um, conscientious. It's about being good people and it's about having great listening and learning skills. So I'm going to read these off to you and uh, I'll read them off slow. Um, you don't have to write them down because you could always refer back to this segment uh, through the star system. But the first thing is that every one of these people that make, makes it to the top are great people that have respect for the game and respect to their opponents. You know, it's really amazing when you see the two teams that play in the Olympics, you see the, the World Series, you see the, the best level after the game. And hockey has a great tradition of no matter how hard they played after the game and they fought each other, you know, afterwards shake hands, you know, go out for a meal or something else. Well, at the highest level of the games that we're talking about, baseball and softball, and even the coaches, after the game is over, you know, they respect the opponents and they respect the game. And they respect each other. To me, when egos get involved on travel ball teams, it's usually because one coach thinks that they're better than the other coach. And the amazing part to me is it's not about the coaches, it's about the players. And so as coaches, all we're trying to do is prepare you to play this great game, and we hope you play it beautifully. Number two, every one of these players has an open focus of what it takes for the big picture that includes time and relentless work ethic. And the time and the relentless work ethic is up to you. How much time are you going to put into this and realize that it's not going to happen overnight? I'm going to go back to the mathematics um, analogy before. For every one of you that's going through your education right now, from kindergarten to when you graduate high school, whether you've got to the level of geometry, algebra, or, or, or uh, calculus, it's taking you 11, 12 years to hopefully by that point, become proficient in mathematics. It doesn't happen overnight. You're not going to have a fourth grader that understands calculus. Well, baseball and softball is the same way. It takes a lot of time to completely understand half of this game, okay? And you never stop learning because something's always going to come up in this game. So to give yourself that opportunity not to put so much pressure on yourself, but to realize that around this turn, there's some other situation that's gonna occur. Around this turn, there's gonna be a, a teacher that gives me some little tidbit, a, a nuance of maybe how to approach this situation. Two strikes, guys jamming me all day long. You know, what, do I, what am I looking for? What am I trying to lay off? Maybe I'm trying to be a little aggressive and not look for just the perfect pitch. Maybe I'm just trying to get the ball in play with the barrel and not try to muscle it up, depending upon the situation, right? 
runner at second base, nobody out. What's your situation? So these are the type of things that if you keep an open mind and open focus, you're going to be able to learn. But does your travel coach, does your high school coach, does your development coach teach you these type of things also? It's never too early to learn. When I first started coaching in softball, I was very dismayed that when I was eight, nine years old, I was learning cuts and relays. And then when I was watching eight and nine year olds in softball, they were learning the cheers and the songs. And so I, there's nothing wrong with that, except I thought we were wasting a little bit of time and not giving the girls enough credit. Nowadays, you're seeing that there's a lot of women that could absolutely play this game. And the challenges right now sometimes are there's a lot of playing baseball and softball and they're good at both. And it's because of what has come about with opportunities, but also you're getting a more serious athlete now than you did 30 years ago. Number three, every one of these players is a great teammate. Every one of these players has an opportunity to continue a legacy that when they're done playing, the other players will say, you know, that was a great teammate. That's somebody I want to be around. And you know this as well as I do. It's a lot more fun to play with great teammates than it is with pain in the butt teammates. And let me tell you something too, parents, you're a part of that teammate situation. So if you're good teammates in the stands, man, happy families, they go a long, long way. Number four, going back to the family, every one of these great players has had a tremendously positive, uplifting family background, tremendous support. And um, the, the car rides home on Sundays are good car ride homes. They're not rehashing stuff. And I don't know if, you, if everybody remembers the old Ted Williams deal of, you know what, this is the only game that you can go three for 10 in and be considered successful. The only business there is, three for 10 is successful. And until you have faced a pitcher of consequence, I challenge you to be quiet and relax. This is not that easy. Trust me, okay? All right. The fifth one is every one of these players is a student of the game, okay? And they continue to learn. And they never stop learning. And they're observant. They're observant, not just in the dugout watching what's going on. They're not just observant in the on-deck circle. They're observant when they're playing defense. They're observant when they're getting ready for the next game. Okay, And the observations come from, if you keep your eyes open, it's amazing what you're going to see. Whether you're going to pick a pitcher, whether you're going to time the pitcher's motion, whether you're going to time the pitcher to take a lead at first base and go. Students of the game, understanding tendencies, understanding coaches' tendencies, understanding this situation calls for that, so I'm going to be prepared. So that's a constant, constant learning process, and it never stops. And lastly, every one of these players has had a tremendous positive outlook. Every day they put the spikes on. Every day they walk from the bus to the field. Every day they go from the locker room to the field. That's a great player's oasis, and they're so happy and exuberant to be out there. They get to play the bat and ball game every single day. So hopefully you can take those six things that we just talked about and translate it into what you want to do, how you want your players to act and, and read things, okay? And hopefully you find a coach, a teacher that instills those type of values, baseball, softball values in how to play the game. And that's probably the most important thing. OK, I'll digress a little bit right now and and just give you some opinions in respect of what I see going on right now. I'm really encouraged by a lot of things like this, this this star uh, opportunity. I'm, I'm encouraged by a lot of uh, the positive coaches alliance information that's getting out. Uh, I'm encouraged by a lot of young players staying in the game, whether they're young guys staying in baseball that have learned a lot of things and a lot more about the young women that continue to stay in the game and pass the messages on to the future. OK, but if we all work together on this whole situation, I think that player development continues to get better. I'd encourage you to continue to learn. And at the same time, I encourage you not to chase rainbows. OK, there's no pot at the end of the rainbow. The only thing that you're gonna gain out of this is through hard work and determination. And trust me, if you are that good, you will get seen, okay? And you are good enough to play somewhere at that next level. But I think it's very important also to have a realistic aspect of what's happening here. Mom, dad, coaches, players. Not everyone is a major leaguer. 
Not everyone is an Olympian. However, at this point, and I asked this question to a lot of 12 year olds and 11 year olds, I said, what do you want to do with your softball? And invariably it's always like, I want to get a scholarship to go to college. And I come back and I say, well, don't you want to make your high school team first? Don't, don't you want to be really good right now? Okay, don't you want to be really good like next year? So you got like six years to go before you even sniff in college. So let's get realistic and bring it back a little bit and let's try to be better tomorrow than we were today and stop worrying about the scholarship opportunities. Because I'll ask you this question. If there was no scholarships in college, would you still play softball? Would you still play baseball? And then if there was baseball in college without scholarships, would you still go to that school that you wanted to go to without a scholarship? And I think those are important questions. If you're relying just on the money, that's not the reason to be playing this ball game at all. If you love the game and you want to get better at the game tomorrow, those are the players that are going to make it successfully in the long run. Okay, those would be my last words of advice to you for tonight. I appreciate your time and your effort to be here tonight for STAR, and I look forward in the future to talk about player development, personnel development as we go further on. Thank you, good night, stay warm.